last few minutes, uh, the woman who has died after being attacked by a dog in southwest London has been named as Barbara Williams, who was in her 40s. Now, let's just uh, stay with that story, in fact, because we're joined now uh, by Robert Allain, a dog trainer and behaviourist. He is in our central London studio for us now. So uh, this obviously is a distressing attack, shocking news. <laughs> It's apparently a Belgian Mastiff, but there has been some confusion about the breed of the dog. What, what do we know about this type of dog? Well, Belgian Mastiff is a bit of a kind of generalisation, but it's believed that that actual breed became extinct after the uh, Second World War, and that in the 1980s, uh, a father and granddaughter had tried to kind of recreate the breed um, and have tried to re-establish it as a type. But it was, the original dog is believed to have been extinct for quite some time now. So, from, from the description you've given and, and other reports of this, this type of dog, it, it's not a, a typical family pet, is it? Well, the original dog was bred primarily as a working dog, but was known to be aggressive towards strangers. They were a herding breed primarily and used to, to pull loads, but they were known to be aggressive towards strangers, but very good with the immediate family. And it's believed that the kind of reincarnation was much the same, apparently slightly less aggressive towards strangers, but still with that natural, very strong guarding instinct. So well, it's quite possible the dog would aggress. Obviously, th this is a developing story. We're, we're still finding out the details. But uh, if this was the owner uh, of the dog, how unusual is it for a, a pet to, to turn on its owner or someone who it's familiar with? Well, I think that, that dog attacks are, we all know already, on the increase, and I think there's also an increase now in dogs being aggressive towards their owners. I think that the people are much more trying to treat a dog as a member of the family rather than the family dog, and this can create problems, particularly if you've got a dog that's very large and very powerful, and you have a kind of coalition-type relationship with that dog, it's perfectly possible that if you do something to upset it, the dog will show its objection, and when you've got a dog this big, that's going to end in problems for somebody. So, from what you've said, it, it's down to, to mismanagement by the owner rather than the, the dog or the, or the breed. Absolutely. I think that, that all too often we see it as very black and white. The dog bit somebody, so we should put the dog to sleep. And there's not necessarily enough time spent on looking at, well, why did this dog bite? And it's that old adage, be careful of what you wish for, because you just might get it. If you take a dog that you think, well, I want this dog to be an effective guard dog, and you don't educate that dog correctly, don't be terribly surprised if the dog does what its predisposition says it should do. So when it's put in a situation where it feels that aggression is the obvious answer, it will use it. But obviously then the dog then gets the blame. But obviously if you look at a breed like this, it's a very big, very powerful dog that comes from a very strong guarding background. Put it in a situation where it feels it needs to use aggression and somebody's probably going to get hurt. So you really need to think very carefully when you choose this type of dog. And we should stress that this, this type of incident is relatively rare. Um, but you, you touched on it a little earlier there. Recently, it seems as though we've seen another increase again in attacks by certain breeds of dogs. Why do you think that is? Well, I think that a lot of these dogs are guarding breeds. And one of the mistakes that people make is that we assume if, for example, we think of our daughter's child or our cousin or our nephew as a member of our family, that the dog should see it the same way. And if you look at most of these dog attacks that have been very serious of late, particularly with, uh, we've seen a lot of, of incidents with breeds like Rottweilers, Rottweilers are actually very good with people. But often people get them because they want them to be a guard dog. They encourage it to be a guard dog and they encourage it to be aggressive. But then they'll leave it with somebody that they think the dog should regard as a family member or a friend. But to the dog, that person may still be a stranger. So often if you go out and leave that dog with that person and the person does something the dog thinks is inappropriate, it's going to treat them as a stranger. So really my message to people would be, don't discriminate against these breeds and just say, well, Rottweilers are dangerous or French Mastiffs are dangerous. Think about the way that you educate it because if you don't educate it properly, it will behave like a guard dog. But that's not necessarily the, dog, the dog's fault. It's probably the reason why the person picked it in the first place. Okay, Robert Aline, thank you very much uh, for your thoughts. Thank you.